Good evening, everyone. Um, my name's Neil Bryant. Welcome to the IDL. I think a few, quite a few of you have been here before. Um, this is this evening where I was here uh, to talk about SME and startups, quite a varied um, scope. And we've got some colleagues from other parts of WMG here today um, uh, who I will introduce as I go through the talk. But uh, hopefully, um, the, the whole evening will give you some food for thought and uh, say welcome once again. My name's Neil Bryant, as I say. I'm Business Development, and I'm going to give you a quick uh, overview of the, uh, the IDH, the Institute of Digital Healthcare. Um, just put up our visions here, but I think the main thing about uh, the IDH, um, which I'd like to uh, highlight, is the fact that we are very much into translational research and, uh, and uh, looking at the impact of uh, developments of technology. I'm going to say developments of technology, that's quite a wide scope for us, from health informatics through systems and processes. Some specialisms such as, um, such as uh, brain tumour uh, uh, analysis uh, using uh, data visualisation and data sampling. But as I say, I really want to emphasise the point that, that, that we're very much a, uh, a, I would like to say, a pragma pragmatic organisation, which comes from our background with WMG, who obviously from their manufacturing background are very much into the translational and uh, pragmatic side of uh, engineering. So a little bit about us. Um, every time this slide appears, we go up more in numbers. We're now up to 40 members of staff. We're uh, accruing uh, or uh, accumulating rather professors and assistant professors like it's going out of fashion. Um, and we're now sort of sitting on each other's laps. But we also have, as going back to this point about the, the fact that we, uh, we're, we're looking at practical applications, we do have um, professors of practice and industrial professors coming from the outside. So we have... Um, people from outside the uh, CEO of uh, uh, UHCW, um, the deputy CEO, CEO of UHCW, uh, Simon Brake from, uh, uh, from the, uh, uh, the CCG, uh, local CCG, uh, and a number of uh, associate fellows coming from outside as well, from UCH, UHCW and from UHB. Um, as you may have gathered in the past, those of you who've heard this before, I do apologise, but I'm going to say it once again which is that basically we are very much focused on the engineering aspects of healthcare delivery or analysing um, healthcare from an engineering perspective. But that does, doesn't mean to say we're all engineers. I'm a geographer for a start, but, um, but don't hold it against me. Um, yeah, we also have behavioural uh, scientists. We have access to psychologists and also increasingly so with some of the work we're doing on semantics. We also have linguists who are starting to work with us as well. Um, currently we have 15 contracts that we're working on of uh, various sizes and as, uh, again a figure that keeps creeping up every time. We're now on about four and a half million of uh, research funding since uh, November 2013. So we've done pretty well over the past few years whilst we've been growing. Um, quite good links with the AHSN as well. Neil's here this evening um, and uh, we have a data centre uh, here uh, we're also in the process of negotiating an N3 um, node here with UHCW, which hopefully will come into uh, fruition very soon, which will actually will give us the ability to actually showcase, I'll come on to showcase in a minute, uh, some of the uh, particular applications in the EHR area, and we're building up some relationships with the likes of EMIS on the uh, GP side, uh, TPP, uh, uh, CERNA, and we've had some very good uh, discussions with IBM and IBM Watson over the past few uh, few days, in fact. Um, so, let's move on. So, I picked out a few points about our research. As I said earlier, really, we got quite a broad spectrum. But in terms of the SME and startup space, I just wanted to highlight those areas of research that we do, I think, which would actually be of, of value to SMEs and to, to startups. Um, healthcare technologies, um, very much on the um, biomedical side, biomedical sensors. Where is he? He's over there. Jerome has just uh, joined us <coughs> as assistant professor on biomedical devices. Is that your official title? Yeah. Yeah, biosensors. Yeah, biosensors. Um, and we've done work on uh, visualization modeling, um, uh, brain uh, physiology, um, and uh, physiological monitoring using healthcare sensors. With, um, and uh, sort of linked to that, the impact of technology on behaviour. So it's sort of a crossover, this one, for us, because we're actually we're talking about wearable devices and technology 
for example, Mark over there, who's the assistant prof for um, uh, to rehabilitation, using technologies for rehabilitation and behavior in response to using technology. So for example, this is uh, just an example of some of the work that's been done in this area using, dare I say it these days, bog standard technology off the shelf, so to speak, to buy it in any PC world store, um, and looking at uh, the use of avatars and um, the, uh, the use of, uh, of technology to actually assess rehabilitation and success in rehabilitation and collecting the data and processing it. Ultimately, we're looking at actually inputting this sort of data into the electronic healthcare record, which hopefully we will be showcasing um, in a few months' time. The other particular area, um, e-health innovation, particularly working with uh, startups in this particular area. Uh, this time last year, we had quite a good success. We got uh, two SBRIs um, working with uh, uh, a couple of local uh, uh, startup companies, um, which wasn't bad because there were only 11 given that year, and we actually got two of them, which was quite, quite a good uh, success rate. Um, also looking at applications, um, Chris, who's coming on a bit later from Everlist, has done some de development in applications, both within IDH as a, uh, as a researcher and also outside as Everlist, his own company. And also looking at telehealth evaluation and implementation of technologies. So very much on that side of it, we look upon as, ourselves as sort of a, uh, uh, an evaluation, if you like, opportunity for people who are looking for various op funding opportunities such as SBRI, um, where we can actually help the development of the technologies but also test pilot and uh, with our colleagues up at the, uh, the Warwick uh, Medical School we can actually do some, uh, some trials as well, clinical trials. Just an example there, this Chris is, I won't steal his thunder because I'm sure Chris is going to talk about this a bit later. This was actually the use of, um, use of Connects, uh, Connect to actually uh, look at um, chest wall motion using four Connects. Um, and it was uh, measured against a, a, a spiro spirometry. And um, as you can actually see there, the success of that uh, was, was obvious. Um, which when you think about it, I think spir spirometry is about £3,000 for a device, something like that. Whereas, you know, even when we bought these, four, four Connect machines was about £400. So um, <coughs> hopefully this is one that's going to move on into, uh, to look with the heart of England into some other form of uh, uh, financing, um, either through uh, NIHR or something like that. So in terms of where we engage with the SMEs and startups, we're very much focused in these particular areas. Obviously, colleagues in the West Midlands do have quite a, um, a tap into innovation, and Neil's going to talk a bit more about, about that in a minute and uh, uh, that sort of thing. But from our point of view, this is very much where we look to engage with, with the SME community and startup community. Um, <coughs> it's a tough world, actually. I'm going to go off the piece a bit here. But actually, at the moment, things are very tough. We've got some serious questions, I think, about SBRI and where it's going. Um, it seems that um, it's not quite tying up with some of NHS England's aspirations. The classic one recently, if anyone noticed it, we actually had um, uh, an SBRI which was monitoring uh, uh, falls from beds, which was a, a device which actually would predict, <coughs> predict somebody getting out of bed. Um, it was dropped, and within a week, uh, NHS England declared that one of their top priorities was uh, management of falls within the NHS. So um, you can, I made a link, which is that I think there's a little bit of um, fracture between um, the investment side of uh, lots of the, uh, uh, the agencies that are investing and probably some of the practitioners of uh, all the uh, practical nature that's of things that need to be sorted. So my, my view is um, really at the moment for SMEs and startups, it, it really is about socialization. It's about getting out there and it's about talking about it because I think that, 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 that we are in a, in a world of dysfunction at the moment for various reasons. Most of it is money, uh, money issue for the, the agencies. Um, but uh, I would encourage everyone to keep going, um, uh, you know, either through uh, the AHSNs, 
people like ourselves and also obviously look at uh, independent funding as well because uh, uh, there are people, entrepreneurs out there who will actually pick upon uh, a good idea and they will invest if they think it's a good idea. Um, in which case you need to get your business case pretty sharp. Can you work on the feasibility behind the things that you've got to actually our ideas? The feasibility? You said like the feasibility of what they are looking for and obviously it goes around the process. Yeah, we very, very, we, we're pretty good at actually putting into the, the phase one what they're looking for. I've had quite a bit of experience in it myself. I've been on the receiving end of an SBRI uh, and uh, so I've, got, I've been through a few hoops on, on that one. There is, yeah, there is one for the GP of the future. Um, we're reviewing our situation with regards to uh, the uh, GP of the future. The only one that may be, did you see the one you saw Chris's chess wall motion thing, whether we could do something with that in terms of diagnosis of, uh, of uh, or uh, measurement of uh, chess wall motion for people with cystic fibrosis and uh, C COPD whether that could actually be done in advance of getting sent to a, uh, to a or referral to a hospital for specialised. Uh, um, but even that, we're, we're a little bit sceptical at the moment about the SBRI response because of this reaction. But I'm sure Neil will come on to that a bit later. And, and I, I would add to Neil's point, uh, that's, that's a good thing, because one of the things I'm acutely conscious of, having been on the receiving end of an SBRI, is that actually you have to make sure your academic partner, I wouldn't say is sound, but the academic partner can actually deliver what the academic partner needs to deliver, not what they say they can deliver. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and that, and that it does make a very big difference. And one of the th philosophies we have here is that if Neil, for example, came to us and said, we've got this, and we said, no, nah, I don't think so, we'd we'll be brutally honest about it. We're not going to say, yes, we have got the people here or the skills here or the academic understanding here to do it, which is why we're twitching a bit about the GP well, call. Cool. Yeah, cool. yeah, exactly. So, so... so well, we, we'd, you know, we'd happily look at it. I mean, in, in the context of, you know, we, we, Chris, who's coming later, we've looked at the GP um, with him and actually gone, I don't think so. Um, and that's based on the fact that actually we, we, we went, and just to show you we're human, by the way, we actually applied using that chest wall motion for um, improvement in the, uh, there was a previous call, something along the line, the improvement in um, pre-care, uh, uh, of people with, with long-term conditions. And to be brutally honest with you, the SBRI didn't get it. It was almost <coughs> too clever for them to understand. It was almost beyond the, the, their ken that actually this thing could actually work, you know, a booth where you could actually walk in and actually you could have your chest wall, you know, motion recorded and you walk out and then you get a referral if you need it or you don't. But that was the concept. But the idea of a booth in a GP practice was one step too far, you know. So it's, it's that sort of thing. So you've got to be, you know, we'd, we'd be brutally honest about it. If we thought it was not worth doing, we'd actually say, and probably push it to Neil and say, well, have you got anyone else who thinks that they've got a goer or whatever? <coughs> so my main point is about this really is in terms of the SME and startup, it's a tough world. I've been there. I've got the scars, I've got the badge. But one of the things I think is quite interesting is that it's always, I say, socialised things. Neil's here tonight. We've got Oren here from the, the Ipsy team. So they're, they're about SMEs who are sort of beyond the start-up. They are in, uh, into uh, how do we take this thing to market and beyond. So um, it's worth having a word with him as well. So 
keep it going. It's not an easy situation. There are people who have got SBRI 2s who've not sold one thing to the NHS in seven years, but they're a successful business. So I think, you know, my point is it's not just about is it success in selling to the NHS. It's about wealth creation as well. And it's wealth creation for you and the UK that actually is one of the drivers. And if you've got something that's worth doing, pursue it. Pursue it for as long as uh, your sanity will allow you to, I think is probably the sensible way of putting it. Okay. Thanks very much, everyone.